Hey guys, so the other day I asked you to send me all your questions and comments in a Snapchat video and that I'd open them up on a YouTube video. So that's what I'm doing today. In case you don't know, um, my Snapchat is Jen23691, the exact same as my Instagram name. So I'm going to go in. Thank you. I like it. listen to one thing at a time first of all I am sorry that I didn't marry you I want to marry you because your friggin editing skills are on fleek do we still use that word on fleek I don't know I'm kind of a late bloomer with trends um Ashley is on a weight loss journey herself and her YouTube videos are so friggin bomb like Ashley is someone that I watch every single time she uploads a video like i'm one of the first to watch like her editing is just amazing i get lost in that not to mention like um how just positive and sweet and funny and cute she is and um how like well she describes her workouts and what she's doing and like she's really big on form. I'll leave a link to her channel in my description. So head over there, give her some support and love, give her a follow, let her know that I sent you, say hi from me, and yeah, you won't be sorry, I promise. So I don't remember the other questions you asked me because it just went like boom, boom, boom. I didn't know how to watch them one at a time. Um, so sorry I didn't marry you, I married Jim. Um, you asked, do people treat me differently? I don't think that technically people treat you differently per se. I think I think the way we perceive, like for example, when I was 80 pounds heavier and um, just super self-conscious, I felt like everyone was thinking the way I was thinking and I hated the way I looked, I hated the way I walked, I hated how big I was, I hated how much room I took up, how I couldn't fit here, couldn't fit there. And so because those things were constantly in my head and that was my inner voice, I just assumed those were the things that people were thinking. So I felt super self-conscious, you know, in public, just thinking people were like, just wondering what they were thinking about me. And now that I'm a little bit more confident and um, I hold my head up a little higher and I, feel less self-conscious, I feel more comfortable in my skin, I'm less in my own head and I'm less projecting those negative comments onto others. So when I'm in public, I don't think, oh, what are they saying about me? Because I feel more comfortable um, and I feel just more confident. And, um, and I think when you act more confident, there's less for people to be negative about. There's less for people to make fun of you about or, yeah, I don't know if that even made sense. So let's see. Hi, Jen. Hi. You're one of my inspirations in my weight loss journey, and I just want to say that I am really, really proud of you. Aw. Bye. Aw, thank you so much. That's so sweet that it was just like a comment. Like, she just told me she's proud of me. Like, that's so amazing. When I get 
when I get like a Snapchat from someone, I'm always just expecting it to be a question. I'm always just ready to give an answer. And so when I get like just random sweet messages like I'm proud of you or you know, you're doing great, keep it up. Like that means so much to me. You guys don't even know. You don't even know. Hi Jenny, much love from Nigeria. I would like to know if you still count calories or count macros and also some vegetarian protein options when eating for weight loss. Then can someone ask you what do you do for fun to relax and unwind and also for some vegetarian protein options when eating for weight loss? Okay. Oh my gosh, I wish I could make the questions one at a time so I could answer one and then not forget the second one. So do I count calories? Yes, I track on my fitness pal. Uh, when I first started my journey, I did it religiously like every single day for an entire year. And after that year, I kind of like dwindled down to like a few times a week. And then uh, this past year, I've been really, really bad at tracking, but I find that when I track my calories, I am much more successful and so, I've been really trying to do that uh, the last couple of weeks and it's helped me a lot. Um, I don't remember if you asked me, but um, I know other people have asked. My calories are set to 1500 calories. Hey girl, happy Sunday. My question for you is how do you stay on track when you're sick? So I've been sick for four days and I have not done too well. As well as, do you have any issues with food anxiety? Because I do. Um, every time I have an unhealthy meal, I feel so guilty. Okay, two really good questions. So, when I'm sick, um, it really is hard to stay on track because I know that for me, what gets me off track is being tired and being tired like prevents me from cooking healthy meals. I just want to get something that's quick because I don't want to get up uh, out of bed or out of, off the couch. If you're sick, you want to just like lie there. So getting up and whipping together a healthy meal is not something I want to do. So I completely understand. It's really, really tough. Even like working out, you don't want to work out when you're sick. So unless you have like a fever or pneumonia or something crazy, um, if it's just a cold, I often force myself to go and work out. And this is why. Uh, when I work out, I completely clear my sinuses and I feel a lot better. I'm less congested and I get more energy and that helps me to be able to cook a healthy meal and put something healthy together instead of just ordering in or being lazy and eating just cereal all day. Um, and then for food anxiety, okay. So I have like every food issue in the world. My main thing is my binge eating and like just constantly needing to feed myself and it's never enough and I'm never full and all that stuff. Um, so what's helped me and I usually have guilt. I would always like my all my years when I would have those major binges, I would always have guilt and anxiety and just get really, really stressed and overthink and wish I didn't do it. Why did I do that? Oh my God. And it would just be really so overwhelming and just so, you know, overall consuming. It was just unnecessary. So what helped me with that was the whole planned cheat meal thing. I knew I wasn't the type of person to just get really strict with my food and exercise and cut out every junk food, salt and sugar and just eat completely clean. I knew that I wouldn't be able to last like that. So planning a weekly cheat meal and making sure that on the day that I had my cheat meal, I would go and work out, I'd eat a healthy breakfast and lunch and leave a lot of calories for my dinner, just prevented that guilt and that's what helps me number one and I've got to get back to that. Planning that cheat meal really helps because the guilt comes when it's usually just like a spontaneous decision, impulsive and it's like the feeling, the craving just comes over me quickly. I get it quickly. I eat it quickly. It's over and I'm like, whoa, what just happened? So when I have to think of a cheat meal, think what I want next week and plan it, think where I'm going to go, think about how many calories I'm going to have and blah, blah, blah. That really helps to just eliminate the guilt because I've gotten used to the idea and I've, it's been well thought out and it's, and I've made it like, I've made sure to have a healthy week. So it's really that one meal I know is not going to affect much. 
that's the best policy. Okay, so those were all the Snapchat videos I got. I guess not a lot of people were comfortable making videos. Um, the rest were all written down questions. So I guess you guys are more comfortable with that. So the next video I make, I will definitely make it a normal Q&A where I ask you to you know, write down your questions and I'll answer them for you. So if you enjoyed this video and it was entertaining at all, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow my friend Ashley. Her link is down below. And subscribe for more videos. We'll see you guys later. Bye! Bye!